everyone. This is Al Fadi, and uh, I welcome you back uh, to another episode, uh, an apologetic one uh, in this series uh, of refuting the claims that the Quran has scientific miracles in it. And uh, with me here in studio, uh, my dear brother uh, Jay Smith, uh, who've been extremely uh, helpful in terms of uh, assessing each one of the claims that we have dealt with. And some of it comes from his own experience, of course, and some of it come from my own readings and my own interactions with Muslim websites and even what I used to believe in myself as a former Muslim. So we're so thankful that the Lord has brought us together in Christ and we uh, are praying that this particular series will be helpful to those of you who are witnessing to Muslims. And if you're a Muslim, we would love for you to interact with us when you watch these videos, send us your comments, your thoughts about what we said, and even if you feel like you can still refute what we have said, please let us know how and why. And with that, Dr. J, what are we dealing with today? Yeah, a, you, everything that we've been doing, now we've done, uh, I think, seven of these so far. In almost every case, there is this niggling one a thought that uh, as Christians, and I'm one of my Christian brothers, in fact, our engineer, uh, brought this up. What if the same questions are asked of our Bible? Would we not find m m much of the same problem? Uh, we One of the example would be the mustard seed, that this is the great, smallest of all seeds, it says in the gospel, when we now know it isn't the smallest of all seeds. Is that an error? Could you then make that same claim? Nadir tried to do that over and over and over again, not nauseam in the debate a few weeks ago. Uh, there are times when the Bible talks about hyperbole. And so they say, yes, yeah, so listen, this is the smallest seed. That's hyperbole. It's not really the smallest seed. It was the smallest seed that, that they used at, in comparison to the kingdom of God. And that's when, when Christ said it. He said, use it always as the kingdom of God. And that, it looks like this was a common idiomatic expression used mm -hmm. in the first century uh, to show the contrast between something that's so small that becomes so big. That's right. The kingdom of God starts out small and becomes huge, just like the mustard seed. The that's Smallest right. of all seeds. There's the hyperbole, which is not really because the tulip seed is much smaller, but there were no tulips to do. And you're not going to use the tulip seed because it only grows this big at Amen. the most. A mustard seed grows as big as a tall tree. So that's why you need this as a example, a metaphor to show you know, what you're giving as an example of a teaching, in this case, the teaching of the kingdom of God. Hyperbole is one that comes up a lot. And so they they don't understand that. Well, I'm going to use a hyperbole right now, and I'm going to put it right back in their laps. Right. I'm going to let's, the Quran is guilty of this just as much. Uh, it's not a matter of guilt in the Bible. In this case, the Quran is making a hyperbole. And, I, and let's open up to chapter 6, verse 38 in the Quran. I'm going to read it here. Chapter 6, verse 38, there is not a moving creature. So, superlative, there is not one moving creature. Every creature on earth, in other words, in fact, says that there is not a moving creature on earth, nor a bird that flies with its wings. So it's saying all animals, all birds on earth. Okay, that's, that means everything. That's right. It's not saying a few, it's saying everything. There's not a moving creature on earth, nor a bird that fly, well, flies with two wings. But our communities, like you, like you humans, okay, referring to Muhammad, we have neglected nothing in the book, then the Lord they shall be gladdered, gathered. So here it's making a huge claim. All animals, insects, birds, everything that, that is living. We're not taking saying some, we're saying all. Is like you humans. That's right. As communities. You're all in communities. And look at the context, comparing to humans. Yeah. And as Cubans, um, we actually live in community. We have families. It's the building block of all societies. What about spiders? Yeah. Do spiders have communities like humans? Apparently Absolutely not. not. Take a look at the spiders. They eat each other. That's right. They live in isolation. They attack each other. They are quite cannibalistic. Yeah. So they aren't like humans. And snake also, ra rarely that you see them together. 
and almost all of your carnivores, whenever a carnivore, whenever there's a male, that it then controls the all of its females. When another male comes and exactly. destroys it, it eats all the offspring of the other females exactly. and creates its own it's offspring. It's almost Is like, that like you know, a family, maybe, but not a community. Is that a community? So yeah. we've just given three examples where this is completely wrong. So is this an error? No, no, this is hyperbole again. I'm not saying it could be an error because I think whoever wrote it didn't really think that through and maybe they didn't know about lions and maybe they right. didn't know about spiders. They should, But it could be very well that they were just trying to make a point here. That their everything is in communities. It's just hyperbole. So that's why Muslims need to be careful. If they're going to say that every time that they see like a mustard seed, that that is hyperbole, I would suggest why don't they look at their own Quran. Right. Now, I know that this is going to cause some people to, to want to react. Please do react. I, or for those who are watching this, both Christians, secular people who are watching this, and Muslims, especially Muslims, come on to Sira and also come to Fander and write in the comments, your reaction to this. We want to hear the reaction to this. We want to know what you think of what we've been bringing up. Are we correct? Are Al-Fadi and I actually using and being fair to the scriptures, being fair to the text? Are these the things that the author intended? We know in the Bible we have, we get questions like this all the time, and we know that we have to answer those questions, and that's why a thing like a vehicle like YouTube is such a great place to do that. But come back to us. Let's go with it, and let's see where we can go from there. Amen, brother. Thank you so much for the time that you have taken so far with us to address these important topics. And thank you for our audience for taking the time to watch uh, this series. We hope and pray that you'll find it extremely helpful. And we uh, appreciate also your feedback and your comments because we take them very seriously. Until we meet again with you, may the Lord bless you richly. Thanks for watching. Make sure to like and subscribe. Also, hit the bell so that you don't miss future videos. And please consider becoming a patron at patreon.com forward slash Sira International. And together, we can introduce Muslims to the gospel of Jesus Christ. Thank you.